So the job we're doing today is we're going to make a start, and who knows, we might get it done, is to replace this old dock here, which has seen much better days. <laughs> So one of the first things I need to do is to measure up to make sure that I can maximise my decking. I don't want to have many offcuts um, with my decking planks. So I think I'm going to go widthways. Uh, where are we? Widthways and hopefully get two cuts. Sorry, one cut, two pieces out of every decking plank. So we're roughly, where are we? 160, 170 wide. So let's go and see how that measures up against my decking. So this is just under three meters in length and our decking planks are three meters long. So it would make sense to have no cuts on the decking at all and make them run lengthwise. But then that would mean we'd have to do quite a few uh, cross joists and I don't know if I've got enough timber for that. So at 150, this is about 170 we saw, didn't we? So it will be slightly shorter than this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go width cuts because it would look better like this. Um, and uh, it'll be slightly narrower. And here in my big cut timber look, I've got this one here, uh, which has been cut down about six months ago. And this one here which will make two good uprights. So I've got two more over the other side, so I need to bring them down ready. reusing old wood let me just show you what happens when you uh, when you try and do that and, and deal with all the the weathering that they've so had a quick tip here when you go to the DIY stores to buy timber is always look down the length of the timber like you're looking down a rifle iron sight now if I hold this down look can you just see how wonky that is at the end where it's warped so if this was going to be the side it'd be dreadful because we'd be dealing with something which bananas out so that's not going to be any good. So my first job now is just to select two decent lengths to be my sides. This one can probably be okay to cut for the ends because in half it won't be so bad, it won't be so pronounced. So while I've been in the lake, my bird has got into my workshop and she wants to lay me an egg. Can you hear her? She's got a cockerel guarding her. Now what's going on? You can't all be in here. You can't all be in here. There it comes. There it is, look. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. And there's my present. <laughs> That's hilarious. So just to explain what I'm doing here, uh, this, this end of these posts will be going into the lake. I've already measured the existing ones to see where they land. And then what I've done is by hand, I've cut a right angle to the top of the post. It doesn't have to be exact, but it's not bad. Not bad at all, actually. Um, and what will happen is the sideboard will, will hopefully sit in there and then the end board Will sit in there that's for those two so all I've got to do now is do the inside ones Okay, so we've done the frame and we just need to do the joist in, in between. I've done the center one with the old timber, but unfortunately I haven't got enough to, to do the other two. So I've had to use fresh timber. It's not quite as deep as the other cart, but the deck is going to be really low traffic. So I'm not going to need to do it much beefier than this. So these are the last two. I've made up two. Um, this is a rest which comes off. It just means when you offer this uh, joist bracket up, it sits down flush. So this will sit down flush. Let me show you. So just imagine that this joist runs all the way along and this is the one that you want to connect with it rather than measure it and so on. I found the best way to do is do this stop. So we just lower that down on top and that ensures that this is on the same plane as that, it's flush. So we then attach the joist bracket on both sides, screw into this joist and then we can remove this away and that leaves you with a nice flush finish. I've come in with the chainsaw and just taken the, the tops off of these stakes and in fact the original piles that were there, these small ones here, um, I've left them in because they're, they're, they're buried into the bed quite deeply and because they've been under the water, it sounds 
counterintuitive, doesn't it? But because they've been under the water all the time, they're still all right. I mean, they're not brilliant, but they're okay. So they're better in than out. So I've, I've used those. So the job now is these joists, which I've just talked about in the workshop, we're gonna get those in just here and here. items to put on the little dock will be some bollards, some mooring bollards. I had a quick look online and you know they're very expensive to buy. Uh, you can buy them in um, galvanized metal or stainless steel or cast iron uh, or alloy for, for yachts but they're all expensive. I perhaps can put a few examples on the on the video as I talk through it. So with that in mind we'd like to have them but we don't really want to have the, the cost of those so I've looked around in all the sort of rubbish recycling bits of timber and things and I've got some off cuts of good old Douglas fir which will make a nice base. Uh, I've got some rather scabby um, post but it's been turned so at least it's round and I've got an old road pin, metal road pin and I'm hoping the combination of all of these three We'll be able to make us something like, you know, just try and imagine it. Try to make something like that. That's the so idea. Let's get to it and see if we can, let's see if we can create a couple. some wood filler over the crack. Wait for that to dry, stick some black paint on. First undercoat is on, so just let that soak in. <laughs> 